it and across the galaxy. This is the Darren Sanders Show. Now, if you're a botanist, you love botanical things. If you're a sexologist, what do you love, Dr. Nikki? Sex. Is that what I'm supposed to say? No, I'm just, oh, it's <laughs> leading it. I thought it was going to be something, you know, a bit bit different, but no, that's... Well, let's just face it. No sexologist gets into the job and is, you know, not interested in the subject. So yeah. you definitely have a desire for it, but it's a different desire. We're fascinated by what people do in the bedroom, how they love you know, who they love, how they sexually identify. And I think that's what leads us into a job like sexology. It's not something that's at your career, you know, your career guidance counsellor comes to you. No. It's not in a, in a book anywhere. It's well, at what point, at what point in your life did you then go, this is the direction? Is it, was it early on that you, you were, because I mean, a lot of young boys early on think, yes, that's the gonna, life for me. <laughs> I'm going to be a sexologist. But, but, yeah, but then they, they go and get a real job. I didn't even know it existed. I yeah. didn't know it was a profession. And I have a background doing psychology and counselling and then found myself divorcing people for a living, which is probably the funnest job that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, great job for some people, but it did start me to think about well, what could I do for these people that they didn't end up in my office? These people that were once in love that were now killing each other. Mm. What... What are do we you doing think? Wrong? Do you think people go to uh, counsellors just to tick it off the list? Do you think that they can be saved? What, 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 I don't think we get help you know? soon enough, and yeah. a lot of people will say that. And even I found that when I was counselling, that most people that were coming to my office, it was just about helping them to split and get to that decision. Hmm. And that's more, I think, there's this Australian mentality that we don't put our hand up and say, "I need help." There's a real stigma around when we say I need help, it must mean that we failed at something versus in America, there's a lot more acceptance to, it's nearly this over acceptance to you can get someone to help you with every single thing in your life. Mm. So you do find people that when they get to the point where they need to go to a therapist or something like that, it can be too late, but I still think it's an important part of the process. But when you do that full time and you see people that are unhappy, no one was coming to me saying, my relationship is great. I've got this great sex life. They're coming to me saying... They would you know, if they wanted to show off and go in yeah. there. Yeah. Can, can you tell us what we're doing wrong? Yeah. You can, can you, we'll, we'll show you. I'll show you a tape, uh, yeah, which yeah, is another yeah. myth of the job. People is think that, that people send me sex tapes and I can give them feedback Sit there and, and I'm like you're, you're no like the, you're like the no. movie show you're like David and Margaret watching yeah, that I'm like no yeah. that's not in, you know, yeah. but if it made me money maybe there's an option mm, for, for yeah. a branch anime career Look, you, you said about the uh, the American way of life with that you have spent a fair bit of time in the States uh, one getting your uh, doctorate, doctorate of, yeah. of sexology <laughs> you struggle with that, <laughs> that word, don't you? no no it's just it's the, I, I was just picturing then the sign on the door, you know, it's sexologist. sexologist yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's, you said it's not really a sex therapist, is it? No, so no. sex therapist is when you know, you've got a problem and they're going to work with you to find out, you know, where you're going with that, what the resolution is, so forth. My job is a sex educator. So a lot of people that I did study with either went down the path of sex therapy, sex research or sex education. I chose to do sex education. So you watch a lot of sex. I have. In the, yeah. it, funny you say that because how we learned about sex was to be shown sexually explicit media for educational purposes. So you kind of sit for educational around, purposes. Well, it's different yeah. to Paul. Yeah. You know, it's not. Is it, is it different? It's, it's, what, it's longer. <laughs> it's longer than a three-minute downloadable clip. Well, a lot of it was filmed in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So yeah. the stuff that we were exposed to was just kind of really out there and a lot of students that used to go to the school would actually volunteer themselves to be part of these films so you witness all different types of sex and the idea is to kind of show you that there's no such thing as normal and look at how different people have sex and you kind of can't learn that just from a textbook you do need to see it you need to talk to people we were encouraged to go to bondage clubs and sex clubs and did you did you have to uh, or did you participate or you just go with your with your notebook and and then and you held and it. well there was down bits and pieces <laughs> there was night one night where a group of 11 of us decided to have a look at a sex club right because we were encouraged there's no pressure to you know, get involved in things because obviously that's a personal barrier, but they do want you to have contact. So talking to people, seeing things, seeing what it's all about, that's part of, I think, 
the idea that when you study at a place like San Francisco and you're studying in a place that's quite controversial, mm. you, you get involved in that. It's not a matter of sitting and, yes, you've got to read a lot of books, but you've got access to people who live these very different lives to maybe what you, you know, you've known before. So 11 of us went off to a, um, a sex club and it was probably the most terrifying night of my life. I was yeah. just, I was so scared at that stage that someone would come up and try and grab me and you'd find yourself in these dark areas and you'd see people making their way over to you and I'm thinking, oh my God, it was like being preyed on. And then someone from the group who you know was more experienced in this world pulled me aside and said, "Stand, something, stand back! I'm stand going in. Go away from Nikki. Yeah. Um, there's something called consent and boundaries. Right. And they said to me, if someone comes up to you, they will ask you whether they can touch you or whether you'd like to participate, and you have a right to say no. And that was something that was new to me because I hadn't been part of that world. And all of a sudden, I felt safe, and I learned about consent and boundaries because. I didn't want to be touched and yeah. I had a right to say it. Fast forward an hour and I found myself at, say, a vanilla club, like a normal nightclub, and this guy comes up and grabs me on the boob and I was so mortified because I was mm. like, I haven't given you permission. I haven't even spoken to you. I was safer in the sex club yeah. than I was at a normal bar in downtown San Francisco. On one of your trips, I think, to the States, didn't you, you observed a, a porno being made? I've done it a few times, yeah. actually, because I oh, do You're have, friends with all the porn stars now, though, I aren't you? I am now, which yeah. is it's a lot of fun because I'm that person that people want comments from. You know, they say to me, can you tell us what, you know, what are the impacts of porn on relationships mm. and do children learn from porn and it's, you know, the worst thing in the world? I thought... I did. I learned from porn. I knew how to... I, I, I learned how porn. to um, clean a pool. And, uh, yeah. and what a pizza delivery boy yeah, yeah, really yeah. does. That's old porn, The Domino's, isn't it? what the Domino's yeah. boy really gets up to. Yeah, Even if, I mean, it's Uber Eats now anyway. It's is not it? Domino, uh, so the Uber Eats delivery person. Much cleaner cars. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to be the type of person that if I'm going to comment on something, I've really got experience with it and I know something, I've investigated it. So I had some friends that run a very big porn company and I said, I want to go on set. I want to see firsthand. So I was fortunate enough, probably about four years ago now, to mm. go on a set with um, James Dean and Annika Albright, who were at that time, you know, really two big names in the industry. Oh, I never, never heard of them. <laughs> never heard of them. Never <laughs> seen them. Nah, don't nah. know what they look yeah. like. May <laughs> have their DVDs. Um, but it was fascinating because I got to speak to the directors and the makeup artists, and just to watch how it was all put together, and then really be able to comment on the subject. Yeah. So when people say to me okay, I hear that porn is fake sex. How is it fake sex? I can say exactly what goes on on a whole day, mm. which really comes down to five to seven minutes yeah. on, a, on a film. Do they, here's one. Do, they, do they shoot it backwards? Like, do they shoot the last scene first? No. So then, everyone does it differently, you know, yeah. but they, they shoot the... You know the last, but I mean the, last, the money shot. The money so, shot. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no they yeah. shoot the money shot right. at the end. Okay. But what they do is there's like little scenes. In one small scene, there's little scenes. Yeah. So they stop and start and stop and start. Now, the interesting thing that I never thought of is that when you look at a female porn star who's covered in very heavy makeup, mm. when you're stopping and starting and stopping and starting, you've got to keep touching her up. Oh. So every few minutes, it was like, well, back to hair and makeup because when you're kissing and you're making out, things can start yeah. to slide around. Then you get into the more. Do they specific. still have fluffers? Is that still part of the industry no, or not? Not the sets that I've been on. I don't no. really think. I don't really think they need it. I, I think. think I think that's. I don't know if that was true. That was always a thing. I'm sure. You hear I'm sure it used many, to. Many many years ago. I'm sure it used to happen, but. Yeah. I mean, in this, I was fortunate actually in this particular set that there was a lot of chemist, like real chemistry between the actors, which isn't necessarily always there you know mm. it's not always that they're really into each other these two words so because these were considered very you know professional actors and very successful in their industry the director said to me when we get to the really nitty-gritty part you know we've kind of done the kissing and the fluffy stuff mm. and the, all that you know even the corny stuff when we get to that i can let them go because it's all about angles so a good porn star will know what angle to put their body in so the camera can come in. Yeah, I've made I've made some homemade porn and it's not good. <laughs> I wonder what you're gonna say. It's not no. <laughs> but, but that's it, is is they you understand the, they understand yeah, the positions yeah. because yeah. it's all about a visual angle. So he said to me, Well if they're really good We'll be able to keep going. They never show them. They in. never show them getting into that position. Though, do no, they? Do you know, like, it's, it's, it's very it's, As you try, like the continuity. Whoever does continuity on these films, they, they need they have a lot to answer for because all of a sudden they're in that position. Go, nah, show me, show me how you got into that position because that's 
that's magical. And all of a sudden they're doing acts that really need warming up that, yeah. you know, we don't see a lot of the background. And that's mm. part of it. But I do remember in this particular set when we, before the money shot, there's a, there's a break. Yeah. And I was sitting off the sidelines and they said to me, they're, they're talking, they're orchestrating the money shot. And they said, Nikki, do you want to have a say? And I was like, yeah, I get to direct a porno. So we were talking about mm. what particular position and how you would do it. And, and then you actually go back again and you take photos, you try and remember the positions that you're in and you take photos. Oh. And then sometimes they go back again and they do it from a wide angle. So you don't see the specific, you know, ins and outs. So yeah. if they're doing an R and X rated, oh, yeah, so yeah. more softer porn, yeah. then some DVDs have two of those. So it's, mm. a, it's a really exhausting lengthy process. Oh, imagine, <laughs> imagine being in it. Yeah, exactly. Well, as someone said to me, they're, they're sexual athletes. Mm. We well, do you think porn has an effect on people then that uh, is, is unrealistic like like completely because that's not realistic sex you know because if, if you want to try and act like and, and i've seen people that you know when you go out at night try and act like they're they're all they're porn, porn stars. stars and you know and you go no, and those no, are the guys you know are just duds in bed if a guy's acting like a porn star when he's out and trying to pick you up it's like what are you hiding like yeah. well, what's going on underneath the surface well there's a tip to know isn't yeah. it hey? <laughs> don't, don't act, act like, like a porn, a porn star. star uh but i think the whole porn world, it's very fascinating because it is fake sex, but we use it as role modeling. So we look at that and think that's what we should be doing in our own lives. Now, I interviewed last year these two porn stars who they're married and they're very well known in the industry. And they, I said to them, what's the difference between what you do on set and what you do at home? And they said, well, if you watched what we would have, how we had have sex at home, you'd see it as quite boring because it's about intimacy and it's very loving. And you kind of scratch your head and go, well, the rest of the world is trying to emulate the porn that you have on set. Mm. And the porn that you choose to have is, sorry, the sex that you choose to have is completely different to what we're all, all trying to do that something is fake. So it's that irony that we're all aiming for something that maybe isn't what's satisfying in the first place. Too many kids already? Don't want any more and can't be stuffed using a condom? Then get yourself Pharma City's new home vasectomy DIY kit. It's the no-fuss, easy operation you can do in the comfort of your own home using the tools and kitchen accessories you have lying around the house. And of course, make sure you remember to freeze some ice cubes the night before. The easy step-by-step -step instructions will have you up and about in no time and back on the horse. Pharma City's new home vasectomy DIY kit, available at most chemists and hardware stores. And some breaking news from the un-Australian and Emma Malik. Thanks, Darren. For your 1995 apologises for Alanis Morissette. The dick pic thing guys like to do now, don't, don't they? Well. Or not? I, I, the dick pic is a lie. I mean, that, that, that seems to be that seems to be the biggest joke of that is that women must just get together and compare them and go, and can com you believe this guy? Completely. And, I've yeah. never had one of my friends call me up and say, oh my God, I just met the most amazing guy on Tinder. You should see a photo of his dick. Yeah. You, that, that's not a sentence that's put together. It's more like... It'd be different if it, if it had some glasses on it and a moustache underneath. <laughs> I'd at least then give them, you know, yeah, quotes yeah, for, yeah, that, that's for funny, the yeah. comedy side of things. But yeah, yeah women, aren't, women are not turned on by someone picking them up with a dick pic. Mm. And it amazes me why men still do it. And I think maybe they're men that like the shock value. That must be the type of people that think, well, someone's going to get shocked when I send them this. But if you're a guy out there that's actually trying to pick somebody up with a dick pic... You think you're better off sending a, a picture of your wallet, aren't you? Oh, that's that, getting a bit superficial. Oh, well, well like the for dick some, pic was for it? Some, yeah. yeah, for some yeah. women. I mean, listen, yeah. if we're in the gay world, then a dick pic is how you pick someone up. Right. You know, that's technically your profile photo, and that's what people want to see. When it comes to women, I think photos like that, once you've started that flirtatious banter, once you've engaged in, you know, maybe you've hooked up once or twice. Or you, have you done a blog about which photos you should use on... Watch dick pics. No, 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 not those, <laughs> but but regular photos, because you know yeah, I've, I've been on I've been on internet dating and stuff, and you see some people, and you did, did, did you did you not even show your friends yeah. that these are the pictures you're going to put up? Well, you know, photo, this is why you are single because oh, they usually cut out or something. And yeah, but I, I've seen photos of people, yeah. and they've got like other women or what looks like an ex girlfriend, and I think. What, I like want to selfies help them in the bathroom. I just look at that and go, "Well, hang on Wanger. a minute." No, for women, women doing oh, women this. Oh, women do. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, and, and you look at, well, no wonder you're here. You're by yourself taking photos of yourself in a bathroom. <laughs> and if that's the best photo you've got. You can't say to your friend, yeah. hey, can you take a decent photo of yeah. me sitting in the couch? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then they'll be, but somebody will look at that and go, hang on, he's already got a friend. Somebody <laughs> took that photo for him. Maybe he's got a girlfriend that's taking his photo. Yeah. But I think we're down to something now, one tenth of a second in terms of our attention span. So a photo is going to weigh a lot these days. When you're mm. swiping through, people will go, do I like their photos? So I think you've really got to put a lot of importance into the photos that you're choosing, but also painting a picture. Mm. People don't read a lot of the content that's attached to your profile. They're not going to read if you're into dogs and what your job is and mm. so forth. So if you're an outdoorsy person, put a photo of you doing something outdoorsy or if there's a passion or a hobby. Because also too, that makes it easier to start a conversation. Mm. You know, like, oh, that's such a cute dog or, oh, I love wakeboarding too or, you know, whatever yeah. it might be. Otherwise, it's really hard when people are sending messages like, hi, yeah. and then someone replies back, hi. I go How's to the your night? I go to the bathroom too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any friends too and I take selfies. Oh, we've got so much in common. Getting older. Right? Now I'm talking about me. I was yeah. like, you but looked you. at me when you said getting yeah, older. Yeah, I was like, yeah, excuse yeah, you? Yeah. Excuse <laughs> you? Your perception is when you're younger that you're going to go and make love and pillage. Make love and not war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then as you get older, I think, you know, you start to understand a lot more. Um, and, and understand people I think a bit better and I think every 10 years things change 20, 30, 40 I'll soon to be 50 so I'm quite interested to know what's going to happen at 50 hopefully things are still working I was going to say let's but, yeah, yeah you may need a prescription for something there yeah. <laughs> but I th it was interesting because I did a, a radio interview recently where this study came out about sex and ageing and it was you know it's good for your heart and it's good for this and all these medical reasons and they said to me well, what are your thoughts on this? And I turned around to the guys and said, well, isn't it stupid that you have to give me medical research as a reason for an older generation to still be sexual? Mm. We are a society that does not accept an older age group having sex. And I'm not just talking about like 50 here. 50 is the new 40, mm. you know, 40 Damn is the new right 30. Is. Thank you. <laughs> but when we look at an older generation people struggle or people think oh well you've you've had a sex life now so no, I think, I don't think worry if things don't work i think too what well. it is is you just don't want to picture them that's well, all that's what someone said you don't yeah. want to picture your parents having yeah. sex so yeah. that's generally where your mind goes but mm. i think that as we get older yes certain things with our body do start to change and can become a bit of a struggle but our mind becomes more knowledgeable and as we get older we understand more about our bodies and we understand more about what's fulfilling with sex, how to connect with someone. You know, one of the, the questions that we can never answer is what is good sex? And if you talk to an 18 year old guy, he'll tell you it's you know, multiple orgasms and longer, harder, faster. A lot of people as they go through life start to go, well, I can do that you know, porno sex and still be really unfulfilled. And they start to understand what it's like to connect and to bond and more of the body to have fun with and other pleasure points. That's something you only get with age and experience. Yeah, That's like 18, 18, is, 18 is what is good sex and 80 is uh, what is sex? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I remember what sex is. <laughs> okay. Now, what, uh, what brought you then to decide to write... It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not really a novel, is it? It's a, it's a guide. It's, a, it's an advice book. It's an advice book. It fits book. very nicely into the self-help category. Does it? And it um, is called Single But Dating. So what, what does single but dating mean? Single but dating for me really stemmed out of my own personal journey. You know, I came out of a long-term relationship. I was not looking for commitment. I was new to working out how to date. And people would look at me with this look of pity when I said I was single. Like, oh, are you in a relationship at the moment? And I'd go no and they'd want to quickly set me up with someone or it was like quick there was something wrong with me because I was single so I wanted to come up with a new term first of all that was a lot more positive like let's look at something that gets rid of that pity and gets rid of that shame but also recognizing that this is where a lot of people are in life right now to be single is you know especially if you have been in a long-term relationship it is the most freeing freeing thing to then see what's out there yeah, for a guy though but for a woman i mean it's still freeing for a woman but there still is, is it a because lot all of your shame. friends have got all your friends are still dating and they've all got boyfriends yeah. and they're like oh poor, i think we have an Nikki's. issue with women having sex yeah. outside of a monogamous relationship even when you look at and this was something i explored in the book even when you look at the health guidelines for sti testing for women and and well let's look at just women here for the minute yeah Everything says before a new partner. Nothing will say what happens if a heterosexual woman is having multiple partners. 
So, you know, that was an interesting eye opener to me because I realized there are so many messages out there that say to women, serial monogamy is the way to go, long term relationship after long term relationship. But if we come back to this whole issue of, of marriage and being happy and discovering what you want out of life, you've got to have some years of experiencing and exploring and experimenting because instead of fitting into this idea of the shoulds, you know, the journey that we should do, find out what's right for you. So really when it came to writing the book, it was like not telling people exactly what they should be doing step by step, but giving them the tools so they can go out there and navigate this single but dating world, but also at the same time work out what they want out of life. So that hopefully if you're in a relationship or if you're not in a relationship, whatever you choose to be in, it's right for you. It's not something you've been told to do. So so your friends have read this and then then said, oh, this is what she's trying to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm one of those people, I'm like, read my book, read my book, because I have these yeah. same conversations with my girlfriends all the time. Yeah. You know, they're t- talking to me about the dating experiences, and I'm like, have you read it yet? So maybe I've got to put it on audio tape, and I can somehow interfere with their lives that way. Mm-hmm. Pick your favorite subject he- uh, title heading. Well, There's the- some great ones in there. My favorite is Don't Hate Masturbate. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That's the, that's the cure for a lot of things. It's exactly. a cure for um, trying to get to sleep. Um, it's a cure for a hangover, apparently. Where did all the men go? Do women still say that? Yes. Where are which, all the good men? Which is uh, ironic because we've got more avenues to meet men these days. Mm. And yet so many people are scratching their heads going, how do you meet people? Like you put your phone away for starters. You know, If you can't find a guy on your phone, like if you're not on an app and you're st- – well, if you are on an app and you're still scratching your head, then – Probably you're walking around life doing this the whole time. And you've, just you're not missed making, the, you've just missed the person walking by you. You're so. not making... How can yeah. you flirt with someone if your eyes are in your phone like mm. this? You know, if... I mean, it's great that we can meet people online so easily from the comfort of our couch. But even recently, I said to these girls I was doing a seminar with, put your phones away when you're going through life. When you're going... When you're at a bar and you're waiting for your friend to rock up, don't sit there on Instagram. Have a look at the people around you. Mm. Make, Funnily enough... Make googly eyes at dudes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Flirt with them. Be yeah. a bit be a bit, you know, sassy with that. These particular girls that came to the seminar took the advice that night. Yeah. And they ended up going on some dates with some guys that approached them because they had their phones away. Because as a guy, if a woman's got doing this on her phone, it's really intimidating to go up to her and try and mm. make conversation. Scary enough to approach anybody, especially if someone's got this barrier. She's probably just assuming she's bored now. Oh, the poor girl's got no phone. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go talk to her. But I, but I do think it's it's yeah. as a woman you can make that eye contact and mm. you can be a bit more welcoming with those advances and at least give someone a signal. I want you to come and say hi to me. Your, your parents, are, you, you've got a very close knit family, haven't you? I do, and yeah. mum and dad are all on board with it. My brother's yeah. not. I think he kind of just doesn't want to know yeah. what, what I do and what I get up to. And right. everyone keeps saying to me, "Why don't you?" talk to your brother about dating I was like because he doesn't want to hear it from me yeah. um, where my parents are always wanting to have two cents about you know mm. everything that I'm doing and I mean listen sometimes it can be really awkward when your parents want to talk to you about sex but it's also nice that I have that support but they're, they're just them. talking and not asking for advice are they no, uh, not really. I mean, yeah. there's been a few hairy conversations over the years and I have to kind of put the brakes on that and go, I mm. still can get freaked out by that. But I use them as my measuring line. If mm. I'm embarrassed to say or do anything that they would see, if I think, oh, I don't want my mum to see this or read this, then I think, well, I shouldn't be saying it. So we've got that kind of open communication. It should be in the world of comedy too with comedians. Some comedians, <laughs> when they say stuff they on stage, you'll be like, you know, no, no, they just say things. You go, oh, man, really? You just say that in front of certain people yeah you know, just because yeah. they're strangers you don't have to act that way anyway your website then is dr dot com. dr nikki g dr nikki g i think i've got both actually do you yeah well, what's what's, 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 what's the main one that people are going dr nikki g dot com dot au thank you very much for uh, coming on thanks for having on me. the show and uh yeah single but dating get out there get it get out there and get it i like that Coming up on the next episode of The Darren Sanders Show. I, I wrote a song with Travis Collins. Right. He's, um, he's fantastic. He really is. He's, um, so, uh, and yeah, we won a golden guitar for Song of the Year, which is... Uh, Pretty good, yeah. Uh, I, I was blown away. I was uh, yeah. re- really, genuinely, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, for me, it's a real highlight. The Darren Sanders Show was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Mike Goldman speaking.